It's the intersectional identity <laughs> problems for me. So I follow bougie black girls all over social media. I love to see women living well and happy, particularly those who bear my reflection. Um, when I say bougie black girls, what I mean by that is African-American women who live upper middle class lives and above that kind of lifestyle, right? So they are, um, these women are seen as a financial minority. You could say a unicorn of sorts. However, when we're talking unicorns, unicorns are typically defined as something rare and desirable, right? Rare and desirable. But looking at these bougie black girls, like in the feedback that they get, it's as if it's something rare and undesirable to society at large, but in particularly their male counterparts. Um, so that would basically make them, instead of being a unicorn, a black sheep, right? I mean, rare and desirable, unicorn, rare and undesirable, undesirable black sheep, right? So um, I have just been, you know, across media platforms, social media platforms, realizing that this is an unwanted population of women, okay? And I don't mean by the men that choose them. I mean, just like, what a blow to the egos of people who are sexist, misogynist, anti-black to have to deal with all of that in one, you know, in one human being. So I follow wealthy white and Asian women as well, but I never find as many hateful words in their comment section as I do under the post of their black counterparts. People seem to accept that Asian women live well or that Arab women hold on to hypergamous coupling standards as a cultural norm. However, much like when I come across black girls with waist length hair, whenever I see the social media posts of black women living well, more often than not, I see their comment sections riddled with that's not real. The impoverished welfare queen seems to be the trope people most believe in when it comes to African-American women. And not only do they agree with it, but it's like they're the most comfortable with it. I mean, when it comes to where they think black women ought to be or belong, like they're the most comfortable with that. These bougie black girls are getting people all in their feelings. And I mean, some of their videos, especially on TikTok, their posts are silent. <laughs> their posts have music but it's like oh you know there just so happens to be a pool on her balcony or she just so happens to have elevators in her home large enough to have her car upstairs with her and it's a problem for people so i've seen comments from people who are downright offended at the audacity of black women to be hypergamous and or wealthy even on their own okay for, for good having a man even on their own right the N-word abounds in these comment sections, as well as phrases along the lines of clout chaser, you know that's an Airbnb, and, and stuff like, oh, whose husband are you with for that, right? And I rarely see similar comments under the videos of white women who are admittedly sugar babies, or Latinas who are admittedly staying temporarily in timeshares or Airbnb accommodations. Like... It is a whole nother level of bullying when it comes to you. These pretty dark-skinned African-American girls who are living well to the extreme, who have chefs in their homes, who have drivers, nannies, like it just, it's an amazing thing. It, it, it's an amazing thing. So um, I've noticed that there's a will and desire to see black women living in dilapidated like buildings and lifestyles. And I often wonder why that is. And I'm going to go ahead and posit that this is due to historical social hierarchies in America, where women and people of color dwell at the bottom of that pyramid, right? And it's an affront to the power structure to deviate from this uh, pecking order, if you will. So, for example, I've heard poor whites use the N-word more times than I've ever heard wealthy whites using the term. In fact, I've never, uh, I mean, I can't say never because there's TV, but just in my personal life, like with meeting different groups of people from different socioeconomic uh, status backgrounds, I've never, never experienced a wealthy white person saying the N-word. It was always a formerly poor white person or a currently poor one who said it, you know, like with like, like vitriol, you know, like that hard ER. Um, I guess in the antebellum South, right, you had this, this dichotomy where poor whites who couldn't afford slaves comforted themselves with the fact that they were not born 
a slave. Like basically by merit of their white skin, they were born above these people who by merit of their own, you know, melanated skin were born into captivity. So uh, defining themselves as the opposite of a people perceived to be worthless was an ego stroke aiding in their superior self-concept. To see a free black person, right? Because as history went on, we started to see free blacks, yada, yada, passing people who pass as white. To see a free black person living on par with them or worse, even better than they were living led to terms like uppity inward, right? Whew. Meaning an African-American of means who sees themselves more highly than they ought to. Basically, you're supposed to have this self-concept of being lower than, you know, non-blacks. You're supposed to believe that about yourself as an African-American. And if you don't, you're uppity, right? Um, the di- That dynamic with poor whites versus the entire population of blacks still manifests itself today. When worse comes to worse in their lives, at least they can say for certain that they aren't, you know, black. And I've seen Facebook posts like this. I've seen recordings and like, like, you're not going to argue with me about this when all you need to do is Google. Google is my friend and yours. Um, I mean, if you want to see this kind of thing, you need to go no further than a black TikTok content creator's comment section to ascertain that this is the actual truth. So something even more peculiar is that men of color, especially African-American men of color, seem to interact with black women as did the poor whites with all blacks and it's a it's it's an interesting thing because i've listened to uh there's this really popular woman in, on uh tiktok uh she's asian and she was like can we talk about how men of color are like white women and i was just like "Ooh, what do you mean by this and i mean so many people replied to her uh, agreeing with her and explaining why they agree and it's like there is some like when it comes to, let's say, misogyny or, you know, women's suffrage movement, you have Caucasian American women who center themselves in that struggle. And when it comes to, you know, racial discrimination, you have black men who center themselves in that struggle. And then you have the black woman who suffers from both. And it's just like, hello, I get it. You guys are both oppressed. But do you get that you're both oppressing me as well? And, and that's a triple oppression for me. Right. And and don't even add to that a disability or the wrong religion or, <laughs> you know, uh, socioeconomic status. Um, so it's an interesting thing. Like um, these men have decided that black women are the root of all their communal issues and that um, African-American women are the lowest human life form when it comes to the female gender, of course, in juxtaposition to white women. Um I don't even want to name these men, but honestly, they literally make content on a daily basis that harass and lambast black women, um, especially those who dare to set a standard and do better for themselves. I mean, the reality is high standards keeps you from low quality experiences. So, I mean, it would seem so practical to someone else but these people are like oh who are you you're no you're supposed to be a baby mama you're supposed to be broke you're supposed to be ugly take off those eyelashes and makeup and the you know and the weave everybody else is wearing and you know you just be humble and dejected and rejected and 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 make me feel good about myself at the bottom of the hierarchy you know there are so many people who are invested in black black women being the lowest rung of the ladder because if we're not then that means whoever is next in line becomes the lowest and they're frantic about it you know, about keeping us in this place by any means necessary. So um, I've noticed that these men um, feel insulted by traditionally feminine black women, especially those who are looked after by wealthy men. Uh, That tends to be a particular thorn in their proverbial sides. I know me personally, I ran into a number of different um, bullying scenarios because You know, there were African-American male counterparts who felt like, oh, well, you talk too white for me and now I'm going to pick on you or you're too educated for me. So now I'm going to bully you or you're too, you know, you live this kind of life and and I haven't. And how dare you? Because you're a black woman and you're supposed to be beneath me as a black man. So whoop de woo 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 I'm going to stump on your neck, you know, and those bullying situations never really last for very long because I don't make a good victim and they find that out relatively quickly. But I mean... 
they conduct hours and hours of YouTube content trying to prove to black women that they're not worth it, right? So many African-American male creators, content creators on, um, I mean, I mean, anywhere you go, really, I mean, they're, they're known for it. So um, it's an interesting to me because if they had anything similar to say about the LGBTQ community or the Jewish community, they'd be shut down for hate speech. But black women are evidently a safe group to bully and harass across social media platforms because the idea belongs to everybody. It's not just an idea that belongs to black men. Apparently, the rest of the society feels that way, too, because... You can say the N-word and call black women all kind of names, but if you say the F-word that rhymes with maggot, you lose your platform, right? I mean, if you say, you know, oh, Lord, and, and I'm trying to be careful because I mine is a monetized platform. I'm trying to be very careful, but like there is no real collective consequence for bullying black women even unto death. This uh, quote unquote strong black woman caricature lends validity to the belief that no one can hurt black women because they're so strong and they're strong enough to withstand anything, right? Because they've been through so much and, you know, there's all this strong black woman porn out there where it's like, oh, you know, you're just so strong and, and, and you can, you know, like we're Atlas, like we're Atlas, the mythological figure who carries the weight of the world on his shoulders, Like, this is not a praiseworthy resilience. The resilience and strength that people are ascribing to us is not praiseworthy. It's dehumanizing. It's downright animalistic. It's downright animalistic. Some believe black women are the masculine, I mean, are masculine like men and therefore unworthy of the things that some of these bougie black girls display, right? Which is being pampered or put on a pedestal. And, um... It's like people don't believe in our fragility. And um, I know me personally, I've been through all of the things that a quote unquote strong black woman is supposed to go through in order to get that strength. And it has not, <laughs> it it hasn't done me the same way that it did someone like my mother. My mother's got very thick skin. I've got no skin. And going through hardship did not like, you know, that whole, oh, whatever doesn't kill me makes me stronger. No, sometimes whatever doesn't kill you makes you extremely sensitive. <laughs> okay. So um, here's the deal. Admittedly, right? I have very little social science to inform the claims that I'm making. And it's my hope that someone younger in college with more time and intelligence on their hands can explore my ideas as true or false, because I really do think there is something to people being so offended, particularly by bougie black girls. Or black girls not responding in stereotypical ways. It's like how Sharon Osbourne was mad at, you know, uh, Cheryl Underwood for, you know, tearing up and getting really sensitive. She's like, oh, you better not cry. If anyone should cry, it should be me because I'm the vulnerable white woman and I deserve tears. And you don't because you're a big black brute and you shouldn't be able to feel anything because you're an animal. Right. That's the fine print. (laughs) That's the fine print. That is the alleged fine print. So, um, as per my personal experience, nothing seems to upset some of these anti-black races and, and black men included, because just because you belong to a group doesn't mean that you don't, you know, struggle with some level of internalized misogyny, racism, or all of the above, right? They, they, more than anything, they hate seeing these particular set of black women living well. I know women on social media who are literally just the, the, the sweetest, politest, little, you know, pink wearing black girls with, with ruffles and, and, and lace and people send them death threats. And it's just like, well, for what? This woman doesn't use curse words. This woman doesn't discuss politics. She doesn't discuss anything polarizing except for, oh, you know, let, let's talk about feminine black women. Let's talk about how we can level up. Let's talk about how we can be really good women and, and get ourselves out of these, you know, ghetto, low income lifestyles and live well to the extreme. And I'm just like death threats, <laughs> death threats, because she wants to take black women out of, you know, leggings and into skirts, <laughs> death threats. Like, why are you so upset? If people are so used to us being the bottom rung of the ladder, they're, they're, they're so used to being able to say, well, at least I'm not a black one. And if I want to fall back hard on something and if I fail, at least I can, you know, fall back onto a black woman who was going to be available for me and take care of me and worship me and blah, blah, blah. But if you get rid of that mentality, then it's like, okay, well, where do they go? 
if you stop being the lowest, where do they go when they fall? To the lowest point, right? It, it, it's driving men psycho. Psycho. Outside of their minds. Um, it is my opinion that African-American women are bullied in a manner that no one else is when it comes to being bougie, living well. I mean, I see, you know, out of girls all the time in Dubai and even white women or whoever in Dubai and they're buying these Celine bags and Chanel, you know, shoes and, and, and nobody's mad at them. No, no one is mad at them. I mean, the worst thing that they'll get called is a gold digger. But I mean, black women do the same and it's a crime. Why, why is that criminal? Why, why do you think, why do you think people are so perturbed by the bougie black girl? I want to know, please uh, comment below because this is a phenomenon that um, I think needs more attention than it's getting. It's almost dangerous to be a black woman and do well. And there's always going to be somebody out there, some public figure with 30,000 people in this chat to let you know, well, you might be a six figure woman who's a size four and, you know, good looking, but hey, you're black and hey, you're, you're dark and hey, you don't look like Halle Berry or Kelly Rowland. So you don't deserve A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, like, like just the whole, like you don't deserve any of this. <laughs> Um, tell me why you think that is, because I am noticing that this is a pathology. Like, like people really just do think this way about black women. And if we really are that bad, I mean, Hey, let me know because it, that it's not true in my experience. I look, you guys, this video could be a whole lot longer if I just sit here and rant and ramble. So I'm not going to, but Definitely let me know what you think about this because a lot of people are like, you know, really hurt and really put off by bougie black women and not just black men. But I notice even on the job, um, no one has given me a harder time on the job than mediocre white women and uh, homosexual white men. What do I mean by that? It's almost like they feel entitled to the attention and admiration of black men. And that's a huge self-esteem boost for them. So you would have someone like me who would come in and maybe I'm not the black girl that they want me to be. I'm not the short, fat, you know, uber loud, uneducated, right? I'm tall, I'm long, I'm strong, I'm fit. I have waist length hair, whatever it is, an education from an Ivy League school. And it just would bother them. Now, the A1 white girls, you know, the beautiful Becky who just has, you know, her beautiful bob bouncing and and her great white teeth gleaming like she never gives me a hard time. The A1 white girls, oh, they're, they're, they're so friendly. They're so kind. They're, they're so appropriate, you know, with me. But it's like it'll be the overweight white woman or the meth head, you know, something like this. Like, just give me a hard time. You know, it'll be the one on her third or fourth black baby daddy. And I'm just like, dude, I would never deal with a man like the one that you're with. I don't understand why you were giving me grief. You know, I've literally had white women come up to me. Oh, you know, that's your hair. Mm, what are you mixed with? Well, I'm black. <laughs> so you're implying to me that a black woman can't grow hair. Okay, you, you have a good one. Or, oh, you know, my boyfriend said you were pretty, but he doesn't even like black girls. Oh, what, what, why would you even tell me that? Like, like happy new year, merry Christmas, mazel tov, walk away. What is, what is going on here? But it's like they're insulted at you not being beneath them. Like it's not just black men. It's a lot of different people. It's a lot of different people. And, and I, again, I don't have science behind this. All I can say is that this is my lived experience. And I would hope that this turns into some kind of a sociology. I mean scientific experiment because I mean I, I don't know I just feel like because of the racial implications of America and the racial hierarchy that we have always had as a pecking order in this country lends to the idea that African-American women must be stranded at the bottom they must be stuck at the bottom and anytime we're not it upsets the pecking order and now people don't know what their place is and so because of that people are united and trying to keep us in our place. 
So, <laughs> all right. Uppity unicorn, and I do mean uppity, and I'm out.